Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits Podcast. Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits Podcast. Today we have our man Ben, who has been fortunate to know actually for a couple of years here. Ben's a full time Amazon seller, ex bulk bookseller, now turned full time traveler, outdoors enthusiast, and online arbitrage expert. So, uh, he messaged our group chat today saying he made 10K in profit on Amazon in a month for the first time. So we're excited to hear about all that, why he skipped out on going to college to do Amazon stuff and all that. So Ben, thank you for being with us, man. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Super excited to kind of share what I'm up to. Absolutely, man. I remember those days of you and Zach posting the pallets in the garage and then eventually the warehouse in the red Pontiac car. That's oh, yeah. good times, definitely. But... So we've known each other for a few years, but if you want to take us back to the start, how you got into reselling Amazon, all that, and kind of the origins of uh, Ben before Ben Books. Yeah, for sure. So I started out uh, junior year, um, Zach, who got me into reselling, he kind of showed me how to like flip Supreme online. And that was like my first little dabbling in flipping anything online. And so I started out doing that. And then that summer after seeing some success flipping Supreme, I started going to garage sales and basically doing that every day from like 7 a.m. or every Saturday from like 7 a.m. to 1, just like getting as much as I could and learning how to do like eBay comps and flipping stuff from garage sales online. And then around midway through that summer, uh, me and Zach both, I think we saw Reezy's videos on doing Amazon FBA and thought it was super interesting and wanted to like test it out together. So we opened a Amazon account and just tried out doing books and just kind of watched all the different videos and started with some free book pickups and also just going to book sales kind of around Vermont. Um, and our first shipment took us like seven and a half hours to, pre- to ship 123 books like, I think we, we all did, probably remember our first shipment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did like so many different things and just like kept messing up the box content too, which like obviously we didn't have to do I, like in different ways. Obviously, we got more efficient after, but um, that was kind of just first time seeing that and then seeing that item get those items get to Amazon and sell without you having to do anything was pretty cool. Um, so Zach then went to college and I just kept doing Amazon going into senior year, just hitting up that summer before senior year, I was basically, um, driving around Vermont and hitting up like every book sale I could. And I slept in my car a few times there and just was trying to hit thrift stores all around New England, library sales all around New England. And it was awesome. And so... I did that. And then in, I'm not great at remembering like the order of things, but basically then I found a Goodwill actually, I don't do books anymore, so I can actually share the full story now, but basically I found a Goodwill in Maine and they let me scan Gaylords in the back of their warehouse. Um, They're basically just, I found it on one of my like thrifting trips and I would just scan books in the back and they would like bring me out two Gaylords at a time, which are these bulk book boxes um i would pay ten dollars a piece for a gaylord which that's was disgustingly cheap. it was absurd yeah, that's and, pretty and how many how many books are in a, a gaylord uh probably like a thousand eh, like, like eight hundred thousand if they're full yeah, think, yeah for those of you who haven't seen a picture of gaylords think like at the supermarket what the melons are in those except just filled with books that's how thrift stores i guess deal with the distribution of all yeah. their donations and stuff like that Yeah, exactly. Pretty much like that. And so they would set up like two full ones and two empty ones. And I would just kind of sort through them. And I would basically drive up every weekend from Vermont to Maine during school and basically go through 16 Gaylords by myself or with someone that weekend, put all the like profitable books in my car, which was like usually six to 800 profitable books in my car going back to Vermont four hours so the brakes and the axles and everything on my car got pretty messed up pretty quickly. Wait, so you were going through 16 Gaylords in a weekend? Yeah. In how, how, how long would it take you to go through one Gaylord? Um, I'm trying that's to pretty good. 
yeah I, I was doing it i was not that fast my my record with two people we made it through 14 in one day together Holy from like oh, 8, wow. 8 a.m to 8 p.m that's amazing how were you so efficient at it i mean it uh, helps that he had an empty I, gaylord he just scanned it, put no, it no, in. i know I, I know that but yeah, I mean, that helped. And then we would just like get in the Gaylords, which also sped up the process a lot. Um, we weren't really sorting to, well, actually what the Goodwill did, which was just amazing that they even wanted to do this. We would actually sort for sell back your book, which for people that don't know is a company that pays you for your like books that you can't monetize. I would literally fill up one, I would basically fill up one sell back your book Gaylord at the end of every weekend from those like 16 Gaylords. And the manager at that Goodwill would like wrap it up and ship it out for me on Mondays when it Dale was like Hummer such a crazy unicorn opportunity setup that it was good that you took full advantage of. So when you were getting started, what drew you to books? Um, well, books were just like something that I could sell already and I didn't have to get ungated for. And um, just it was just what I was introduced to first with like Scout IQ, the scanning app. And just like having a scanner and just, it was also cheap because yes, I'm very cheap like a very board. frugal person. So just like spending money on stuff was just not something I liked doing. So books kind of matched like used recycling, just like getting to reuse stuff and just keeping it super cheap. And so like basically th those Goodwill runs that I was doing were like almost free every time because I would bring all this random stuff to a local bookstore after the weekend, like all these random DVDs and video games and stuff I'd find. And whatever they would pay me would basically pay for whatever like friend I brought to scan with me and like all the Gaylord cost, which was crazy. Um, so I was doing that basically until COVID hit. Um, and like I had my first like $5,000 net profit month doing books while I was doing that whole process that's and, in high school too like this is senior year in high school you know 18 months ago almost two years ago yeah and basically COVID hit and then it was just like I couldn't go to the Goodwill anymore so I had to pivot and so honestly for when they closed down the FBA stuff I basically stopped doing Amazon for like a couple months other than like flipping switches and like whatever else the weird problem I remember you doing that you were oh, selling yeah. them for and other all people, this right? Is yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah, because posting for years. Yeah, I think I messaged you about it too. Maybe, yeah, I yeah, because I I was somehow ungated in Nintendo like automatically already, and so a ton of people were asking me to sell their switches, and I sold like a ridiculous amount of like hair clippers for someone too. I think it was one of Miles' friends that yes, he said. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, I, I totally forgot about that. Were, yeah, were these that. the wall hair clippers? Oh, yeah, they yeah, were. Yeah, oh, we yeah, sold yeah. a bunch of those, yeah. <laughs> sold so many of those, like, for them. It was crazy. But basically, I did just a little bit of FBA those, like, months it was closed, and I just, like, went hard on Instacart, Instacart which was yes, sir. crazy. I made 15 grand in three months doing and, that and wasn't like isn't 500 of it from that one guy's referral bonus no 1250 he, it was a 2500 dollars sign up bonus that this guy hit from my youtube video yeah so you may and you were ranking for instacart or something right yeah if you look up my instacart video and my uh how to build ltl shipments for amazon i'm i think in the top five for both when you like this is up. Yeah, funny story. So I, know, to, Instacart, I was lower down, but yeah, incentivize people to get, you know, people to do Instacart, you know, pick up people's groceries during the uh, the world event. They were giving out these crazy referral bonuses and tell the story because it, it's just really funny to me, the, the details of it. Of the guy that hit it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, he, I think he had to complete 70 batches or so and it was $2,500 that I would get if he hit it. And I was paying out 50% of that to the people that hit their bonuses. And I think he had like 28 to go in the last like three. I never got in contact with this guy. I could <laughs> not like get in contact with him. And he somehow got it down to like 28 with three days to go. And I somehow got in contact with him, I think through Instagram finally. And I was like, dude, just do like not whatever it was like nine batches the next three days and you'll get 1250 bucks and he like somehow knocked it all out he even took like his last day off of work 
to like finish it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it <laughs> that's so funny, man. I don't know why that just. But it it was it was pretty crazy, um. But then basically, when my school went online for high school, my senior year, I basically just like gave up on that, and um, I started doing. I went to the all the Burlington reopening sales and went crazy on like all the shoes and stuff because it was fifty percent off all the Burlingtons when they reopened after COVID, um, and so I did that, and then I basically just moved to Maine because stuff seemed to be opening up a little bit again. And I was like, I'm going to go back to the book thing. And the whole situation in the back of the Goodwill wasn't really a thing anymore. So um, I met my business partner, Josh, who I met through actually Ryan and Lindsay on Instagram. They referred him to me originally. So all my connections basically have like been through social media, which is just further proves the point of posting on social media and just like at least being a part of it. And yeah. so he had a warehouse already. And at first I was buying Gaylords from him cause he was just getting truckloads from that Goodwill. And then we decided to just split everything. We would each have our own store, but we would split all the truckloads in half cause you'd get 52 Gaylords on a truck. Um, so we would do that. And then we scaled it to the point where we had five employees at one point. And basically we hired all five of those employees and got to the point where we were sending out like 2,500 books to Amazon each a week, right as the restock limits hit. And so so that's ultimately what crushed it is that restock limits coming to and then restock limits came in. And along with that, the whole like book market kind of tanked a little bit when they came into place those restock limits yeah, because everyone was just to, liquidating everything yeah sell their excess stuff to get the sell through rates. yeah i even liquidated uh i still had like a couple hundred books left on my account and i just set them all like super low because i wanted them all gone yeah exactly i mean I, I still have some books on my account that i just need to like create a removal order for but I'm yeah, well. I would do that ASAP, especially if you're scaling up the OA because you need your sell through metrics high so your restock rates keep going up. Yeah, honestly, I have like so much space. I have like 4,500 in oh, like. Oh, all right, never mind. Yeah, that. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, that, that's that. Yeah, that, that'll be pretty hard to fill up. Yeah, and no, so, I, I've, I've not had any trouble like with that. So obviously, now we know kind of you know where your business is at. Can you walk us through that transition from? ending the book big book business and now into kind of getting into what you're doing now? Yeah. So it was definitely like a big transition because um, my business partner actually got started with OA, like as we were still doing books and I just didn't really want to commit to it. So I went more of the use shoe path because I just didn't think I could commit Lower to spending risk. that much money yeah. on like inventory. And I, was, I just had a mental block where I was like, I can't do OA. And then eventually when the restock limits came in and I was like, this whole um, book business isn't going to work anymore, which was actually on my road trip um, when I kind of was like, I'm done with this book business because I don't really want to, I didn't want to like have to like report to people anymore. Not that I was reporting to people, but I still had to like tell like me and Josh still have to figure out like who was going to be at the warehouse or like what employees were working and stuff. And I was, I just didn't really want to do that anymore along with the fact that it wasn't working. So then I started looking into OA and watching like uh, your videos, Miles and uh, Warner's videos and just kind of learning how OA worked, what softwares I need. I switched over to inventory lab finally for OA. Um, And then I tried out tactical arbitrage for a little bit but uh, I didn't really have too much luck with that. And then um, my friend actually reached out about doing the leads group um, that I help him run now. And so that's where I was getting most of my OA leads at first. Um, And then I still got a lot of my leads from there, but then recently, and I've only been doing OA now for like a month and a half, actually. You're making good money though. Yeah. That's great money for a brand new technically like you know brand new business yeah definitely i mean i really only had like two or i had like two to five grand in my bank account when i decided to start oa so not really that much um but i just went like crazy on my credit cards where i had up to like a 28 
thousand dollar balance. Um, and then like the cash flow from Amazon kind of caught up, um, mm -hmm. where to like my next payment right now is like 23 K for the two weeks. So that is definitely helping with cash flow and just like learning how to, I guess, yeah, get my money it's back. So and much. Again and yeah. It's a lot different. And after you get a couple cycles of reinvesting just mathematically, like as long as your stuff's on, then yeah. you end up good, but We've definitely all been there a little tight sometimes getting that snowball rolling. Yeah, exactly. So you're, yeah, go ahead. You're, I mean, you're, so your story is great, first of all, but it's all about pivoting, right? You, you did one thing, something happened, you adjusted, you started something else, you adjusted, you started something else. Throughout that journey, did you ever feel pressure? Like what was that pressure like in terms of obviously still having bills, still having a life to, to live, right, to, to fund? Did you ever, what was that pressure like as you kind of grew and adjusted and adapted to all your situations? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely like stressful at times just because like at certain points of the business where it wasn't doing well, I was just like, well, I don't feel like I can make money well with this business or just like feel like I can make enough money. Um, so there's definitely those points. One thing that helped a lot is that I live super, super cheap. So like mm -hmm. I was my like living expenses were only about a thousand to 1500 max. So like, even if I needed to DoorDash would obviously cover that. Um, so that definitely helped with the buffer of like being really stressed about it. Um, and then just, yeah, just kind of knowing I had different things in my back pocket that I could always like go to if I needed to, um, for extra income or just like stuff like that. It definitely helped. Um, and then just like reaching out to other people too. Like, I knew, I knew you were going to bring that up. Yeah. The network's so important because you've been coming up like at, at least two years, you know, me and you have been friends for like two years, like all these other guys, like it's huge. Gary was talking about pivoting to have friends you could go to, to ask questions and everything. And you already have that leverage because you built up that social equity people have seen your old and everything that when you need something, you know, people are there to help because you've, you've helped them. Yeah, definitely. And just like asking the right questions too. like once you've done like some of your own research and like, are obviously not just going straight to someone for a question, but are doing some mm -hmm. of your own research on at first, like people are very willing to answer those questions because like, if you're actually doing research before they're pretty well formulated where it's like a very specific question. Yeah, I mean, we all had we all had those people as we were all coming up in the game who oh was God. that sort of mentor for us, right? We all reached out to people as we were growing, and, and it's just about kind of providing that to someone else. Um, Danny, you have a question? Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse my voice. Danny, but Danny's I, voice is very uh, <laughs> speaking right now from the Jake Paul fight. Lucky yeah. his bet hit, so you can imagine uh, he was hyped. Yeah. Thank you, Miles. Um, so my question is how different is a $5,000 a month profit doing books versus a $5,000 a month profit doing OA? It's a good question. Um, let me think about that. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely more spending for sure because, well, actually it's honestly not that much more spending. It's because just like, way different, you know, yeah, it's, it's different way spending. different. It, with O or with books, I would be spending the money on inventory and on the freight and on employees and on supplies and all this extra stuff. With OA, I'm like spending just 100% of my money on uh, inventory, and then basically all my stuff. I've like become pretty confident that I know it'll sell, and so now it's just like almost a patience game. Yeah. Like I, the first month of OA, I was, I was like very stressed about getting that money back. Um, but now coming up on like two months or a little over two months, maybe like I feel more confident, like just sending that stuff out, kind of knowing I need to wait like up to 45 days or so for that whole turnaround to happen and then getting it back to reinvest. And, and then, it, yeah. No, what were you saying? Uh, the, the biggest thing that, like has changed from books to OA is like books was just kind of like a, it wasn't as organized. I felt like, um, where it was just like, you have these processes and just everyone's scanning and it's just like, how much stuff can you send out? 
And now with OA, like I'm way more organized just with like all the spreadsheets tracking all my purchases and just like, that's, that's like the biggest advice I've found so far with OA is just be like extremely organized with all the stuff you're buying. And I mean, doing. and the structure of the businesses is different, right? You were leading a team before, which I mean, I don't know if you enjoyed or not, but now you're, it's more solitary, right? You're, you're doing your own research. Are you prepping your own stuff or are you using a prep center? What is that process? Using prep center. I, I prep okay. my own stuff for the first like month, I guess. And now a hundred percent of the stuff's at the prep center. Because yeah. you'll be tra traveling again soon. Do you want to tell us about your uh, travels over the past year and plans for the future and everything? Yeah, so I did a lot of traveling this summer. Um, I went to like 23 states or something like that. Um, I drove from Maine out to New Mexico uh, and, and did about 60 days of travel and paid $0 in accommodation. That was my wow. next question. So how, did, how does one get 60 nights of free uh, of free accommodation. Yeah. So the things I did, uh, well, I did trusted house sitters, which is like the most amazing platform out there, which is when people go on vacation in exchange, they, uh, with pets, you get to stay at their house for free in exchange for taking care of their pets while they're gone. And so it's almost like Airbnb where people will like post their houses on there as like a stay. So like, for example, say like you can filter it by like length. So like say if I filtered for a month, I could see like, hey, there's a house sit in Dubai for a month <laughs> and I can take care of their one cat and get to live at their house for free for a month. And they're literally all over the world. And my friend Cebu, she's literally been doing it all around the world for over a year and living rent free. So we did a house sit in New Mexico for 10 days and then one in south carolina for 10 days and generally they're all like very nice like mansions to be honest because it's all rich people that are on this platform so it's pretty cool doing that and then uh the rest was free hotel nights from just using credit card rewards churning um so a lot of the chase cards and the hilton honors cards basically between those two you can just get free hotel nights so easily and the third one was just doing uh, free campsites on public land where you can just stay in your car or camp for free, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. What was out of that entire experience? What is there one memory that sticks out? One sort of something you saw somewhere you went? Is there something that kind of is the epitome of the entire experience? Yeah. Losing to me in one-on-one -on -one in Pennsylvania, <laughs> July 9th. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you do not have the date. Please tell me that date, that date isn't accurate. I don't know. I'm pretty that's, sure it that's was. That's probably January. accurate. Sure that's it was pretty, July 9th. That's yeah, probably something accurate. Something like that. Yeah. That's super not surprising. But that's what, about so, when I left. So that's probably pretty accurate. Um, Probably one of my favorite things was going to White Sands National Park um, in New Mexico it's like the world's lar largest like gypsum sand dunes. So it's just like miles and miles of these like giant white sand mountains. And you can like sled down the mountains and it's just unbelievable to see like that in nature, which was just incredible. And the, the one other thing was uh, car camping in uh, Oklahoma on this like lake island like in the middle of the lake and just oh, waking drone up. Shot was like a, yeah, so. just waking up and going to bed to these like amazing sunsets and sunrises. That's pretty sweet. And plans for the future for traveling? Yeah. So right now I'm back in Vermont right now. Um, and cause my lease was up in October and since then I've just kind of been bouncing around to different like houses. And now I'm back in Vermont, uh, at my mom's house and I am converting my car right now um, building a platform into it with like storage underneath and the goal is to leave January like 7th or so and start my journey around the U.S. trying to hit all the Icon Pass ski locations around the country which there's 31 in the U.S. And You've so, already done two right one or two I've done three so far um, and then I have three more to hit around here on the East coast. Then there's one in New York, West Virginia, two in Michigan. And then from there, it's like all Colorado, Utah, 
more out west. What's the one in New York? Crazy. Um, I can't remember what the one in New York's called. It's in Wyndham, New York. Interesting. But Maybe I Danny and I have to pull up to that one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll be ahead. in uh, I'll be in Montana in early January skiing, and then I'm gonna go to Utah. I think after. Oh, and right. and how you're I you're obviously gonna continue selling on Amazon throughout all of this. Do you want to tell us your current setup, which allows you to do that while full time traveling? Yeah. So basically, my setup right now is just all from my computer. As long as I have Wi Fi, I can run my OA business. Um, so basically like my day is just waking up, um, making sure like my repricer and stuff's working and then like all my listings are doing well. And then I'll just do some research on what needs to be restocked for products and like take some time doing some reverse searching and just kind of looking for more profitable products and everything I buy just then goes into the spreadsheet for like prep centers and all goes to the prep centers and they do all the prep work for me. So Mm -hmm. basically from there, it's just making sure basically my only task at this point is making sure I'm tracking my stuff and buying more inventory, which you have a certain spend goal per day that you're trying to achieve. Um, I haven't gotten it that detailed yet. Really. Um, I'm trying to spend enough to get at least 10 grand profit a month right now based on my like spreadsheet. So it's probably what, 50, 60,000, 70,000, something like that. Um, uh, there'll be a lot less than that. I assume the type uh, of stuff like, you're buying, the fee like, structure is different. Yeah. It's like 30,000. 30, something like 30. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like last month, I think I spent around 30,000. This month, I've spent like 12 to 15,000 so far with like seven or eight grand in estimated profit. Yeah, so. and you made you had that one really big day like a week or two ago when everything checked in at once and like oh, yeah. was just going crazy. That day was insane. Every like the prep center sent out a shipment of like 90 items or something, and literally they all sold on that day. And then I was yeah, just they like, checked well, in. damn, I don't have any more inventory now, so that sucks. Got to go buy more. <laughs> yeah, good, uh, good, good problems though, because you know, yeah. as long as you're that, buying that's honestly been sucks. my biggest issue so far just like keeping stuff in stock like i just can't do it that's <laughs> good i mean that's the best problem to have i would say you know so many people out there struggle to find stuff to buy and you're obviously you know in the trenches doing it and now you're having success with it and everything so that's probably the best problem to have i would say yeah honestly the biggest tip i found is just like the the products that you find that are really profitable just look at the other people that are selling those products and just like go through their stores and you're gonna find more products yeah, because they yep. wouldn't be selling stuff if it wasn't profitable. Yeah, exactly. And like you and, keep a tier full. And of those people. are the that's sort of the blind spot um, idea that we always talk about. Like some of those products are not going to be picked up from TA, right? So we need to be doing manual as well as any sort of automated searching that we do um, to kind of have a whole spectrum of searching. Yeah, exactly. That is definitely what I found. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you obviously didn't end up going to college and everything. You just kind of, you know, took it as you went. And I see, I was in like a similar place where I didn't totally have shit figured out, but like I was done school, you know, a year ago and it just kind of eventually clicked like four to six months ago with everything kind of coming together. But that curiosity, you kept going, you didn't like, I'm sure there was doubt, you know, when the book thing wasn't working everything, but like you kept going. And I think, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like just how ha- I can't trust enough. I say like every episode, having friends in the community is so necessary. Like, and just, it gives you such leverage. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's so huge because you're seeing all the other people that are crushing it and just like what they're doing and just being able to connect with other people that are kind of on the same level or just way higher level or is mm-hmm. it's just awesome for your motivation. Definitely. Yeah, and, and you've, just, met, I mean, just you've take... met up with a bunch of our friends in the group chat too. Yeah, I, I think I've met up with like 50, at least 50% of the group. That's crazy. Man. Yeah. But, Were you at the Miami event? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I don't know, I can't remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. He Everything tried to, he tried to meet up there. with us after the, um, after oh, the that's after party. Right. That's right. Oh, that's right. You couldn't. Couldn't get it, and exactly, it didn't exactly work out. <laughs> some, no, one, some, one, some young kid. Do you, right, yeah, uh, I forget his. I I know you're. He's in the group chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
We don't have to say his name. <laughs> but um, so obviously your your entire journey is not necessarily standard. What is sort of the familia or from like family feedback that you've gotten in terms of what your friends have thought about it, what your family thinks about it, what kind of support have you received? Um, that's that's one thing I'm like super thankful for. I'm, like my family is super supportive of it. My dad was an entrepreneur and ran a restaurant and did real estate, done all kinds of different things. And so like he was pretty supportive of it. Um, he's always, he's always a little speculative of anything new, but when I, when I show him like what I'm up to, he's, he's always very supportive of it. And my mom also didn't go the traditional path of college either. Cause she is from Germany. So she did all her like schooling kind of there. Um, and so she's very supportive of just like whatever me and my brother also do. Cause we both did not go to college. Um, or are not going to college, I guess. Um, and then all my friends think it's super cool. So that's always cool to see the support. Yeah. Um, when I first originally started with like garage selling and stuff, when it was like, you kind of had to build up like a lot of items to like start seeing some profit. Like some people were just like, why, why don't you just like work a job instead of like putting all this time in for like little profit. But sticking with it, that's when like it starts growing more. And you but, you were making those pizzas too for a while there. Oh yeah, yeah that that was that was a great job for four years of high school basically. Oh, I didn't realize pizza. it was that long. Yeah, uh, I started when I was like fifteen, and then like senior year was like that summer is when I left. Mm -hmm. And so, purely speaking from a business perspective to help the people out there who haven't started or are just getting started, what would you do differently if you could do it again, the whole process, knowing what you know now? Um, I mean, like just use the resources that are out there, like to get started now, it's so much easier. Um, just like getting ungated in different categories. Oh, like I didn't, so much I didn't know any of that stuff back. Like I, I didn't even know that, that stuff until like earlier this year, like how to get ungated and stuff. Well, I mean, to your credit, a lot of it has changed. Like the yeah. whole landscape of ungating is nowhere near what it used to be. Even 12, 16 months ago, it's quite different. Yeah, that's true. But just for like a new seller, it's like so much easier to just get started, get those ungates, and then just like jump right into RA or OA and like start spending money just from like watching YouTube videos about PIPA and basically those essential things that you need to know. And so that that's honestly the biggest advice join the groups as cody always says just like join every lead group mm -hmm. as much as you can and get as much like info as you can um but and then and then just staying organized is yeah a big, like making sure you track stuff you're doing what are uh what are your thoughts on the wholesale model and the private label model could you ever see yourself moving to that i think those models are awesome but i don't know I don't really see myself headed in that direction too much. Um, just with like the, like with wholesale, it's a lot more like calling and setting up with suppliers. And it's more of like, a, it's not an, it's obviously not a nine to five, but you're more working in those nine to five hours. Aren't you as a wholesaler? Yeah, with ab absolutely. Cause everyone you work with on the wholesale side, they're working salary or commission based jobs, which are usually yeah, yeah. nine to five. You tweeted that the other day, like all the distributors are like, get, they're going on vacation like the next two weeks. Yeah, I said these next hours. two weeks are like my least favorite out of the year because no one's in their office. And if they are, they just don't care about anything. They're just looking forward to their vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So th that's honestly the main reason I don't really see myself doing too much uh, wholesale or really getting into it just because I kind of want just like the freedom of my hours to work whenever. Yeah. Um, and I like OA for now, as long as it like keeps working well. So I think there's just so much opportunity with like, there's already too many products that I don't have enough capital for as yeah. I think miles did a tweet about it or something about it. Um, yeah. It's something we talk about a bunch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's um, so, so much out there to buy already. Yeah. And Before if we history, start to wrap up here, it repeats itself. There's going to be even more products similar to when the first uh, world health event started with this current one that's getting worse already yeah. it seems like that there may be even more retail or online uh, arbitrage opportunities 
Oh yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be uh like even though it's all from my computer now for OA, I'll probably be still doing some RA just while I'm like on my Too trip. Because there's much a lot of it's free. like relaxing yeah. almost. I like yeah, I never, I never really did RA just because like I didn't know what to look for and I didn't feel like going to the stores. But now from doing all my OA research, there's some stuff I can't really buy online that I know I can find like pretty readily available in store. Curbside pickups are yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's like, a major key. Yeah, especially like Nike outlets and stuff. Just like I have some stuff that I know I can just go in and get. So if yep. I'm on, driving by those places, I have like my Rolo printer with me in the car anyway, so I can do shipments from some parking lots. Yeah. All so right, before fam. we start to wrap up here, do you think do you consider your bulk business operation a W? Is it a, would you would you consider a success based on what you learned, what you took away from it, the leadership skills that you gained, or was it is it just a, a total? Oh, I I learned so much from that whole year, like more than I probably would have ever learned going to school for business or something. Just on oh, yeah. this aspect of it, like just managing a team, dealing with payroll, dealing with all those different parts of a business, and it was like a it was like a full legit kind of like typical business, like for like classification of that. But so I, I learned so much and it was definitely worth it for that standard. The profit wise wasn't really worth it, but what I learned was totally worth it. Especially so you had, so so much you, more. You had a partner uh, at multiple different times selling on Amazon. What would you say some of the pros and cons are of having a partner any tips for someone that may have a partner now? Um, honestly, yeah, I mean, we never really had any issues, which was just amazing that we just got along so well for all the business stuff. And like, we're great friends now too. Um, so just like making sure that it's like someone you trust, that you're both easygoing, because especially in a business, like things will get stressful. And if you're someone that does not deal well with that or like freaks out or something like that partner, that's not going to be fun. Um, so yeah, we got really along really well with that. And that was super good. And just making sure that what you're going to do, like with your splitting your business or whatever, like make sure that you know what that is. Like we kept our stores separate, so we didn't really have to deal with any like extra tax stuff, like doing it all under one business. Um, so that was nice. Um, you were to do it over again, would you do it with a partner or without? Oh, definitely. I mean, I could not have done bulk at all without like having Josh as a partner. Um, he handled a lot of like the ordering and like the more complicated stuff, I think. And then I did a lot of the stuff with the employees and like getting them out and getting them trained. So like we both did different things and he'd run a big business before. So he was really good at that side of things. Um, so just like having that balance of some people that are better at one thing and then one person that's better at the other thing works really well for having like a business partnership. Nice. All right. Amazing. So we do want to say before we finish up, the majority of the people who listen to us, at least on YouTube or watch are not yet subscribed. So please hit the subscribe if you haven't already, but thank you once again for listening. Make sure to go follow Ben. All Ben's links will be down below. So make sure to go do that. We have a couple more episodes that are coming out before the end of the year. So thanks once again for making it to the end of another episode. And thank you, Ben, for coming on. Yeah, thanks for thanks, having ben. me. And I will see you guys probably on the road. Yep, absolutely. Got it. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks a lot.